Today, we're going to show you how to update your kitchen cabinets with Formica writable surfaces. Yes, Formica writable surfaces come in a variety of stylish designs and colors, and will add a touch of personality and practicality to any kitchen. So, let's get started by taking a look at what you'll need to complete this project. To create Formica writable surfaces cabinets, you'll need a drop cloth, safety glasses, dust mask, and gloves, medium density fiberboard called MDF, in the same thickness as your current cabinet fronts, cabinet hardware, grade 12 sheets of Formica writable surface in your chosen pattern and color, measuring tape, fine tip marker, sawhorse, jigsaw with fine tooth down cut blades and straight edge, two inch masking tape, contact cement spray adhesive, J roller, router with flush trim router bit, sanding block and sandpaper, dowel rods, fine tooth mill file, and a drill with drill bits. Always read and follow the operating and safety instructions in the Power Tool Owner's Manual and instructions for use of the accessory. Also, make sure your room is well ventilated and wear safety glasses, a dust mask, and gloves when using any power tool. Before beginning, also read the adhesive precautions and directions and cover your floor with a drop cloth. Do not adhere for microwritable surfaces directly to wood, plaster, drywall, or concrete. The material must be mounted to a substrate first. We're going to start by building the cabinet door substrate from MDF. That stands for Medium Density Fiberboard. First, remove the cabinet door you want to replace, and remove all the hardware and set it aside. Now, measure the exterior dimensions of the cabinet front and write those down. Then, measure your MDF. Mark it with the correct measurements, use a straight edge to mark your cut line, and cut it to the size of the first cabinet front with a jigsaw. Repeat these steps for all the cabinet fronts that you'd like to make. If working with many different cabinet front sizes, label the MDF panels and the cabinet fronts with tape to help keep everything organized. Once you have all the MDF cut to size, you're ready to cut the Formica writable surface. For this video, we are using our 949 white marker board, but there are many designs and colors to choose from. Always begin by making sure your surface is clean. So, wipe off any dust or loose particles with a damp cloth and let the surface dry. Then, measure the cut-down MDF panel to check the size. All Formica writable surface patterns come standard with a peel coat to protect the face of the product. Leave the peel coat on until the end of this project. You want to be sure to make the marker board 3 eighths to 1 half inch larger than the MDF panel surface on all sides so you'll have adequate coverage. Mark the dimensions directly onto the peel coat of the marker board, the same as the MDF, remembering to make it 3 eighths to 1 half inch larger so each panel overhangs the MDF. You'll trim the extra laminate off later. Place the 2 inch wide masking tape along your cut line to avoid chipping during cutting. And redraw your cut line on top of the masking tape. Cut the material with a jigsaw using a fine tooth down cut blade. Cut two panels at this size, one for the front of the cabinet door and one for the inside. Use the same measuring and cutting process to cut edge strips, including leaving 3 eighths to 1 half inch overhang on all sides. Any dirt can show up as a bump when you glue the marker board to the MDF. Wipe all surfaces to remove any dust and let dry. Now we're ready to glue. Formica Group recommends using a contact spray adhesive because of its strength, ease of use, and cleanup. You'll start with the edges first. Spray the adhesive on the marker board strip, then spray two coats of adhesive on the MDF panel edges. We're spraying the edges twice because the raw side of the MDF panel absorbs more glue than the face. Let the adhesive get tacky. Be aware that once the two surfaces with the adhesive touch, they will permanently adhere. So make sure the strips are aligned before applying. Apply the edge strips by hand, making sure there's overhang on all sides. Use a J-roller to apply pressure to bond the edge to the MDF panel sides. Roll from the middle of the strip out to the edge. When you roll to the edge, be careful not to crack or break off the overhang. After the edge surface is covered, trim off the excess material from all sides with the router and flush trim bit. Use a sanding block to make sure the marker board is flush with the MDF. Repeat this process for all the edges of the MDF panel. Now, let's move on to the front of the cabinet door. Clean the front of the panel again. If any glue from the edges has seeped out, remove it at this time, following the glue manufacturer's instructions. Next, take the marker board piece cut previously for the cabinet front and apply the spray adhesive to the back of the marker board panel and to the surface of the MDF cabinet front. Once the two surfaces with the adhesive touch, they will permanently adhere. Place your dowel rods six inches apart on the MDF surface and put the marker board on top of the dowel rods. 
Be sure to align the surfaces so the overhang is parallel with the MDF panel edges. Now, slide the dowel rods out, smoothing the surface out with your hands as you go. Then, apply pressure to the cabinet front with a J-roller. Trim off the excess with a router and a flush trim bit, and file the edges in a downward direction to get them flush and remove any sharp edges. Repeat these steps to apply the marker board to the inside of the cabinet door. Now, let's install the new cabinet fronts. First, peel off the peel coat from all sides and all edges. Hold the new cabinet front up to align with the hardware and mark on the material where the screws will need to go. Next, we're gonna drill the pilot holes onto the marks. To do this, first choose a drill bit slightly smaller than your screws. Drill a pilot hole the length of the screw into the new cabinet door. Do this for every mark where you will be placing a screw. Then, choose a drill bit slightly larger than the screw. With this bit, you will only kiss the face of the marker board panel over the same holes you've just drilled. Here, you only want to cut through the marker board itself. This slightly oversized hole in the marker board will allow for the natural expansion and contraction of the product and prevent cracking in the marker board. To attach the handles, simply use a drill bit that is slightly larger than your screw. Drill all the way through and attach. Now, hold the door back up against the hinges and screw it in. Wow, this looks amazing. With Formica writable surfaces, you can make your space stylish and functional. Find out more at formica.com.